Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome back to the channel. So I've been playing the PTR in Overwatch lately and I just wanted to talk a bit about the new roll lock feature. I have to be honest, I wasn't really looking forward to this feature all that much. I'm of the opinion that team comp is rarely the issue in competitive, or more specifically having two tanks, two DPS and two supports. I don't think is that important. Personally, I think it's actually teamwork and hero flexibility that carries games. For example, I strongly believe that tank mains need to have a strong Wrecking Ball or Orisa in their back pocket, while support mains need to have a strong Mercy that they can pick when necessary. Why? Because, let's face it, there are a lot more DPS mains than anything else. People might think that insta-locking DPS is toxic, but honestly, as someone who is a bit of a jack of all trades, I'd rather have a DPS main playing on DPS than a DPS main on tank. Seriously, a bad tank will absolutely soft throw a game. I've always known and accepted that 3, 4 or even 5 DPS is a possibility, so I've purposefully worked on my Wrecking Ball and Mercy game a lot. When you end up with a lot of DPS, you really can't beat Mercy for support. I know a lot of people think they're too good to play Mercy or whatever, but a good Mercy player can genuinely carry games when you have more than two DPS. Likewise, a solid Orisa or Wrecking Ball can be the difference between a win or a loss with those same multi DPS comps. I've won games with no tanks, I've won games with no supports, and the fact that I can do it and still have fun has always kind of made me think that other people just need to suck it up and roll with the punches. Obviously, that's a bit callous because I know other people may not have as much fun as I do playing wonky comps, but at least in my experience, multi DPS comps that are actually all DPS mains and aren't just support mains throwing a hissy fit and switching to Torb can be really fast paced, and I actually enjoy that playstyle. But my other reason for thinking 222 roll lock wouldn't be that great is the fact that there's more to team comps than having two people in each role, obviously. If you get a 222 dive comp with Baptiste and Moira, that's honestly worse than having four DPS, Wrecking Ball and Mercy. Likewise, you might end up with an Orisa and Zarya one trick on the same team, and that's also pretty suboptimal. So I totally had it in my head that 222 wouldn't solve most of people's problems. But actually, there was something I totally overlooked, and this is a complete well duh moment, but having people playing roles they actually chose to play makes such a big difference. Yes, there are flex players like me who feel fairly comfortable in every role and are happy to flex, but as I mentioned before, there's nothing worse than having a diamond DPS bring their gold level Reinhardt because they feel like we need it. It's very nice of them to try and step into that role, but it's really ugly to watch. Obviously, the role queue hasn't been on the PTR for very long, but I have played it quite a lot already. I'm trying to moderate my expectations a little bit because I know that the PTR is attracting more cooperative players at the moment, so live might not be quite as good. And speaking of which, I haven't played on the live servers since the PTR patch went live, but I've heard it's even more hellish than normal for 3, 4 or 5 DPS comps. And that further proves my point, I think. PTR probably isn't an exact representation of what this patch will be like on the live servers, but it's still an interesting look at things to come. So let's talk about what you can expect when this patch goes live. So let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. You are still going to get terrible comps that will probably lose you games. 222 does not fix that, at least not entirely. The Torb, Sim, Mercy and Moira one tricks aren't going anywhere, and as much as I love all of those heroes, all of them can be situational. They can hard carry games in some situations and then soft throw in others. Those people are still going to be there, so you're still going to have to play around them. Personally, playing around a one trick doesn't actually bother me that much, and I certainly never avoid them. Reason being, that May player who soft throws your watchpoint Gibraltar game could be the exact same person that makes it impossible for your team to take the first point on Eichenwald, and that's kind of the crux of the problem with one tricks. They're very map or comp dependent. So if you're someone who is bothered by one tricks, just prepare yourself. They're still going to be there. The other bad thing I need to mention is, sorry DPS, but you're still going to get the blame for most losses. I always thought the reason people blame DPS was because of DPS mains getting forced into a role they didn't want to play, and it is understandable that you'd be mad when someone takes your role and then underperforms. And I half hoped that role queue would tame that a bit, but no. It turns out that some support and tank mains genuinely think the DPS players are always the problem. 
So yeah, sorry DPS, you're still the problem. It really makes you think though, and I guess this is a bit of a tangent, but what the tank and support mains think they're bringing to the table? Do they really think that they offer that little that a win or loss is entirely decided by the DPS? Because that's certainly not my experience. I know that I've hard carried games on tank before, and maybe support too, but I don't know. And that actually gives me a good segue into the first good point, or maybe another downside if you have a fragile ego. You're going to learn what you're actually good at. Honestly, I think my DPS rank is going to take a little bit of a nosedive with the roll queue, at least at first. All of my best DPS heroes are at least partially situational. I can play Farah or Sombra or Torb and keep up with people who are much higher rated than I am. In the dive meta, I climbed up to and maintained a high master's rank for multiple seasons as DPS, but that meta is long gone and Farah has become a lot weaker, at least for my playstyle. So if I start off as DPS and a situation calls for, say, a Widowmaker or Genji, right now I would ask one of the supports or tanks to switch roles with me. With roll queue, that's not an option. You're going to be rated entirely on your DPS pool. So if I'm popping off as Farah and the enemy suddenly switches to a comp that Farah, Torb or Sombra isn't going to work well into, well, I'm kind of screwed. I mean, I can sometimes pop off as McCree or Hanzo, but I'm really inconsistent. And that fact is definitely going to lose me games. But that's actually kind of cool. It gives me something to work on. Likewise, I learned something else about myself. I'm a much better tank player than I thought and a much worse support player. Again, I kind of relied on switching roles with my support picks. I don't really play Baptiste, Brig, Zen or Moira, and that's a pretty big gap in my hero pool. So I've actually been struggling more than I thought with support. On the PTR right now, it is by far my lowest rank. And conversely, I got placed straight into mid masters on tank and I gradually climbed up to GM. Honestly, I don't think I belong that high. I'm only really up there because the PTR ranking is just completely scuffed. But I have been playing with and against people who are actually 4.4k plus. And I've actually been kind of surprised how easily I've been keeping up with them, especially on Zarya. And this whole experience has kind of made me realize I I think that's probably going to be my most played role when this thing goes live. My only major gap is Roadhog and I'm pretty lousy with him, but every other tank I feel very confident on. And I think that's going to be a big decider in your success in the new patch. How big is your hero pool in a given role? I think supports and tanks in particular are going to have to be capable of playing the majority of the heroes in their role. But the same thing applies to DPS too. I think if you're a one trick, you're going to have to be even better than before. Right now, if you're say a sim one trick and the enemy counter picks you with Farah, your team might go three or maybe even four DPS to take that extra hit scan to deal with Farah. But with roll queue, if you're a sim one trick and your other DPS doesn't play a solid hit scan, there's a good chance you're probably just going to lose, unless you're an insanely good sim to just make up for that gap. But potential downfalls of the new roll queue aside, my experience with it so far is playing with teammates who have a much deeper understanding of their role. When I queue tank, my fellow tank players instinctively seem to know when switching to dive is the answer, or when a weird duo like Wrecking Ball or Orissa might be the viable choice. Why? because they're actually a tank player. So often on the live servers, I'll be playing Reinhardt and the DPS flexing onto tank thinks Roadhog is the correct choice because he's kind of a fat DPS. So that kind of suits their playstyle. And sure, sometimes that can be okay, but other times I just don't make as much space as I'd like to because I can't really brawl and build Earthshatter as fast as I could with Zarya while the Roadhog literally is just playing as a DPS. So it kind of ends up feeling like I'm solo tanking anyway. But on the PTR, so far, it seems like the tanks I play with know which tanks work well together. And that's not just because I got placed quite high. I have another account that got placed a lot lower and my experience with that has been similar to a slightly lesser extent, but still much better than it is on the live servers. Pretty much much every role I've played has felt a lot better. Like I said, when things aren't going well, DPS still seem to be getting the blame most of the time, whether I'm that DPS or not. But more frequently than on the live servers, you get supports and tanks who are actually willing to help you do your job. When I play Farah, the supports will willingly switch to Mercy, or the tanks might switch to Winston Diva to dive the hit scans that are preventing me from full-on steamrolling the enemy. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but 
it's definitely better than what we have right now. So if you're someone who hasn't played Overwatch in a while, especially if you quit because of wonky comps, you should really consider checking it out again. Roll Queue is getting a beta season on the live servers starting on the 13th of August, but if you're on PC, you can play right now on the PTR. So I highly recommend you check it out. There are some balance changes as well that are slowly pushing things towards a more varied meta too. I think there's still some work to be done in that regard, but at least for now, people seem to be playing all sorts of stuff and making it work. So the future looks pretty bright and most importantly, goats free in Overwatch for the first time in a while and I'm super excited about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more gaming guides, news and discussion. And don't forget to check out the links below to Patreon, Discord and Twitch. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.